the meeting to order. In the packet was the, the minutes of our last meeting. Is there any changes, corrections, or omissions that anyone caught that they'd like change? Move to approve. Is I'll there second. a second? Moved and seconded. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carry. The uh, first item that we have for new business is the request for the warning sign to go out on the end of the Dyke Beach that uh, was in the packet, the PDF on it and the information. Mike, you wanna lead that? Yeah, I can uh, intro that. So we had a student from UWL who is a Hudson or was a Hudson resident um, and still is from the area, had to do a research project uh, as part of one of her civil uh, classes and she chose to do some research on the end of the dike road um, and did it on like I said the some of the misfortunes that happened out there and uh, she wanted the park board to consider placing warning strong current signs out there um, so just to let park board know and uh, Mike Kennedy was gracious enough to go out and walk to the end of the dike road and did his own research but uh, and took some photos but we actually already have strong current signs out there. And Mike, I don't know if you want to explain where they're located in correlation to the beach. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, as you walk down to the end, right where it starts opening up to the beach, there's a number of signs um, of all kinds of warnings and things like that. But then on its own, yeah. before you turn to, to approach the beach, there's one right there still on the hard surface. And then I think there's three, could be four um, posts driven in the sand right now they're right about the water's edge so i assume during normal table it's you know right there in the beach um mm -hmm. and they're pretty descriptive i mean they're there's a there's a clear warning there's also i don't have the photo in front of me but there's symbology in case you know there's a um language barrier there sure. um, and then there's some there's actually some more detailed information about uh, the dangers of swimming and the undercurrent and and things like that so um yeah so when i saw that i thought well, that's uh, you know, the old better be safe than sorry, but I think we've already um, addressed that with that signage. I, I don't, I personally don't think anything different than what we already have there it might actually confuse the matter. But um, that being said, it was a great write up and great research. I'll, 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 I'll say that that was, uh, it is an important subject. Um, yeah. But it's, I, we have at least, uh, like I said, three to three to five signs that are pretty clearly marked. Yeah. And I know maybe Renee uh, aren't the, the student wasn't aware that these were placed because it was fairly recent that these were put up. So she might not have been aware of it. Um, but yeah, I, I would I would recommend just um, like Mike said, using the current signs that we have out there. Um, I think it does a sufficient enough job to, you know, warn the, the, the users of the beach of the you know, dangers of swimming and the strong currents. Mm -hmm. So. We just won't take it up as a motion then. Correct. Yep. But yep. thank you to Renee Arn for, for doing that and reaching out to the city. And um, Absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah, we're always encouraged when, when students are engaged in civil matters of the city, whether it's in parks or streets or public safety. So that's good. That's good that the youth are getting involved. So thank you, Renee. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a segue into the item B, and, and it was the discussion on possible action and approval of a request by the Girl Scout Troop to put in selfie stations in the park. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe, I believe there is some representation from the Girl Scout troops on the call tonight. Is that, is that true? Yep. I that is up. true. Oh, great. Okay. Awesome. Could you identify awesome. yourself, please? Sure. Um, this is Gretchen Whithune, and I'm here with my daughter, Georgia, who's one of the Girl Scouts. And then our, I believe our co leader is. On yep, the line I'm, also. Here. I'm here. My name's Ember Hutton, and I'm here with my daughter, Eleni. Excellent. Thank you for coming to the meeting and for your proposal. Do you have anything that you, besides what the city already has, do you have anything else that you wanted to add in terms sure. of a presentation or anything tonight? Um, well, I think just in addition to the materials that the girls have already gathered in doing their research, 
we wanted to emphasize that um, the girls are very flexible in how they would like to have to execute this. And um, if approved, they're really excited to have um, the partnership of Liz Melanifi, who has done some really great um, projects around town that she did the mural wall along Vine Street. And she has agreed to partner with them to do the messaging and the artistic painting of these selfie stands. So they really represent Hudson. I think it's a, that's a great idea. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but I, and the rest of the board, but I think in order to, I think you could get us to discuss the concept tonight and maybe approve going forward with the concept, but we'd have to see any final artwork or things like that that were gonna be put up in order to approve them. Do you follow what I'm trying to convey? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, George says yes. <laughs> pouring cold water on it, it's just we'd need to know more of, of what it is that it that we're approving. Um, any of the other park board members care to, to jump in here, Mike, or um, anyone else? I, I, I think it's a great uh, concept and, and the idea of, um, you know, bringing people to the parks and, and, you know, memorializing their event or their day or whatever. Um, just one, one word that, that um, stands out to me is the word that it'd be a permanent structure, um, which makes it a lot more um, of, a, of a deeper question, I think, for park board uh, to go forward with. Um, we have done some art displays, I know, in the recent uh, past. Mm -hmm. uh, the stargazing, or the you know the the the, um, the planets and things like that. Um, and a lot of, to me, I think a lot of the reason that that was approved and a great idea. And hey, let's let's check it out. There was a time frame on that, um, and we, and we do that, of course, to kind of uh, um, you know not not have structures and permanent installations uh we'd run out of park space pretty quick if we did that with with uh everyone uh, that up there so that's just my uh, um comment about this um the word permanent um seems to stick out to me and the other would would be you could easily with so many unique places within all the parks within the city of just having a a, a map of some kind to where they are in locations to, to go to, to take selfies that show without as much needing to rely on um, anything permanent there other than a location marker or something like that. You follow what I mean? Yeah, almost an app or something like that. Yeah. That would lead one to the end of the dike, to the boat launch or to the, or the horse bridge at the end of St. Croix Street or to Prospect Park or, you know, the Indian Mounds, anything like that that would get them around to all the different unique places we have within our parks. That's a great idea, I think. Um, and is, is that something, if it was multi-location, would it still um, need to be semi-permanent? What needs to be there? It's essentially a, a post that gets um, pounded into the ground. Please. That's what I mean. If you come to us with, here's what we want to, here's what we want to have this post in this location, and it will look like this and have this information on it. Then I think it's something that we would be able to, to give a yay or a nay to. Yeah. Paul, what's yes, your um, thoughts on that? Or, or... Well, I, I, first of all, I, I really appreciate the proposal. And I thought when I looked at the, design although it's not the final design i thought it was really appealing i thought it was really fun i thought uh -huh. it, i thought these would look great in some of our parks um i didn't really think about the permanent versus is there, is there gonna be a time frame on it so that's a that's a legitimate question i think to ask um i i like the concept so i'm supportive of the idea um i think what we probably would need is a little bit more detail on the locations exact locations and then with liz kind of what it would look like. Um, but I don't think that's gonna be a ton of work, hopefully for, for the Girl Scouts to work with that. So maybe I'm thinking, I mean, I, if unless other people feel differently, I think we could send it back to Girl Scouts to come up with a, a few more details 
and then, mm -hmm. um, at the next meeting or something, we could, or however, I don't know how long Liz needs to work on it. Maybe it's two meetings or something, but um, we could come back and look at the final design. Does that make sense at all? But I think I it's think a great so. idea. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. So do you want to formally have a concept approval? Mike, do you need that or you, we can just go forward? No, I just think what you are discussing gives the Girl Scouts a direction. Um, so they need to finalize design with Liz, um, mm -hmm. finalize the locations, right? And um, Gretchen, if, if you or the girls need help with that, please reach out to me. We have a GIS tech that can whip up maps in 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> just a matter of like, <laughs> what's the, what specific spot of the park are you looking to put this? And then the third aspect is think about that permanent versus semi-permanent question are you looking to have these up for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Because when it goes in front of council, they're going to ask that question, how long are these going to be up? So just have an idea of how long you want to see these in our parks, if it's going to be, yeah. So just have that thought out before you come to park board next meeting. And you're also taking on the maintenance mm -hmm. for that period of time with it. So it's something that's going to have, have to be, you know, um, be able to handle the weather and and vandalism and that kind of thing that would take place to them so that'll go into the mix as well and mike i had a question too on um mowing because these are posts right from the from the little concept i we had i didn't know if you can get a, a a mower in between that or if you had a interest in sort of saying there needs to be a minimum you know so yeah. between these mm -hmm. posts or something or does that matter for for the park uh, upkeep well, correct me if I'm wrong, girls, but I believe the selfie stand is just one post at each location. And what I would recommend is we would, we would, when we place them, we would almost uh, drill a hole and pour like, um, like you do with a mailbox, you put a, a concrete foundation in uh -huh. so that, so that we don't have to weed whip around them. We can just mow around them. Um, it just makes it easier on our staff to maintain them. Is that, is the post going to be painted or is there like a sleeve that goes over the post? Did Liz say anything about that? Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm pretty sure that the just like the post will be painted, not like anything that goes around it. It's um it acts like a fence post. So the inside is the apparatus that goes into the ground, and then the painted part is essentially a sleeve mm -hmm. that fits over that. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. is there is it kind of clear to the, the Girl Scouts what it is that the park board is requesting that they come back with? Is that what they want you to do? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you for the work you've already put in. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. That's great. Item yeah. C on our, our list of new business is a discussion and possible action to proceed with the request for proposals for a, a concessionaire food truck to go in on our lakefront park. Yeah, so with the uh, vacation of the, the concession stand area, obviously, um, since I've been here, we've just struggled to keep a tenant in there. And administration, city staff has kind of urged the park board myself to consider putting in a, a food truck uh, down in Lakefront Park to kind of make up for that lost um, amenity in the lakefront area. Um, so we brought in, put the, Deb put together the RFP for a food, food truck. It would just be one food truck. Um, and then that vendor would be able to have a food cart if they would like that can walk out on the dike road, so on and so forth. And uh, bring it in front of park board for discussion. Do you like the idea? Do you want us to proceed? If you do, You'd have to make a motion for staff to uh, submit the RFP. Um, basically, what would happen then is companies or food trucks would submit to the, to the city, and then the park board would have a chance to review that at our at our next meeting. Little history before the bench, y'all had the the concessionaire in there. The city was facing vandalism costs every year from the just not having or lacking a set of eyes and people around there to correct the behavior. And the concessionaires were that set of eyes and we benefited greatly from it, but everyone has struggled to make enough off of it because of the hours and the, 
the variableness of the traffic. At one time, years ago, Paul Anderson had a not a food truck, but a um, a snack truck like you'd see pull up to a construction job site that sells, you know, candy bars and soft drinks and ice cream and and that thing, not a full blown food truck, food truck. Um, the his, history on that, Pam would know some of it that when approached in the past was with food trucks that they were something that was um, picking the pocket, so to speak, of the restaurants that are already here that created the, the traffic for the people to come here. And now that's being siphoned off by the food trucks. And I think personally that we'd want to be careful with how we worded it, that we were clear in our definition. That's my feeling. Yeah, I, I follow you on that, uh, Pat. I think that, um, you know, maybe if it's a food product or a drink or ice cream or something that's maybe not readily available, although mm -hmm. everything I just mentioned is probably available. <laughs> Milky sells ice yeah. cream and, you know, whatever. So, But I think it's different than if they're selling lunches and full meals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and if it's, you know, it would certainly be a lot of beverages, I think, which, you know, you, you really end up going to a store for to bring down to the beach. You wouldn't be. Oh, yeah. Going to a... mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's oh, a different kind of. I think you'd of... be busy down at the end of the dike all summer long. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different kind of venue, I think, and it's a different kind of customer that you have down there. Yeah. So I think there's room for, you know, certainly supporting local restaurants and having a food truck that does something a little bit different. I think you can do both of those things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I like the request for proposal. Um, I think it's a good idea. Um, it gives flexibility to, would the food truck be moving? Is that what you're thinking? Or would it, would it be always at the end of the dike or would it be? Yeah, well, then that doesn't leave us anybody in our bathhouse. So that doesn't solve our problem. Right. But I think to say with that. Right, I do, but I think the bathhouse idea we were going to, I thought we were going to put on RFP for like a paddle sport kind of deal, paddle um, boats and stuff. Yep, we do have a RFP out right now for paddle sport to go in that mm -hmm. concession area. So I, yep, I would say, that... try to, I'd say try to do both of those things. Like, why not try to do both of yeah. those things? Yeah, do I don't want... think the idea was to have the truck going up and down. I think they no. can, they'll be allowed to have a cart. Yeah. We just don't want it, the truck going up and down the dike. It would just be a cart of some sort or a golf cart or okay. a push yes. cart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you like the operating hours in the RFP? It says 11 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., which is when the park closes. Or do you want to try and limit it to not yes, affect the, the supper hour? Or do we want to say they can, they're done at 9 o'clock in the evening? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, I, did, I did have some difficulty with the ten thirty. I don't know why they would need to be. Yeah, no, I think we were we were trying to. It was um, more for the park hours, but I think uh, the other thing is we have the concerts in the park, and they usually get done between eight thirty and nine. You know, by the time they get mm -hmm. cleaned up, and you know, it it's a little bit of that for the concerts, and just yeah, I don't know that it has to go that late, but. Even 9.30, 9, 9.30. I think 9.30. Probably 9 o'clock, but you did, there isn't that much traffic down there on those other nights. To, no. For the, you think of the concessionaire paying somebody to sit there or be there. Right. Bad weather, good weather. You know, if there's people down or not, that it's always been the killer to, to anybody having the business <laughs> there before is all the downtime. And like Paul said, I, I don't I don't think it hurts to go out for an RFP. Obviously it has to come in front of park board and council yeah. prior to any approval. So I, just see what we get. And if we don't like it or we think that it competes with the local restaurants, we don't we don't approve it. So or that I think let them be flexible <laughs> on what hours they think is the right hours for them to, to try and do it. Okay. Yeah, because I think it might be hard to get a food truck to commit to that much time depending on how much business they get anyway i mean it'd be kind, yeah. of, a risk on, kind of a risk on their part but what i was going to say is um 
they could go a little earlier in the morning if they wanted to, too. Like if there's families out there swimming at 10 in the morning with little kids or something, they're going to want something too. So um, I think you just put the range of hours and, and leave it up to the, and leave it up to the, the vendor, I guess, to figure out what, what's most profitable for them. Mm -hmm. And then I think if we re retain the right to, to object to, to those hours, we can object to them requesting more hours be filled if we don't think they're doing it enough. It could be a negotiating point with them. Yeah, either way, I would say. Yeah. But putting it out for an RFP would be interesting to see what we get for people coming yeah. in. Yeah. So Mike, are you looking for a motion tonight? Yeah, I just look for a motion to direct staff to submit the RFP. I would, I would move that. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. I'll second. It's moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion necessary? If not, the chair will call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I hear no oppose. So anything else you need in regards to that, Mike? I think it's pretty clear, isn't it? Clear as mud. <laughs> oh, and then the other thing you had, Mike, was the removal of the, the pine stand out at Yeah. Park. Yeah, so I don't know if if obviously I included some photos in the packet. It's hard to mm -hmm. to capture the overall health of that. Um were you able, were the park board members able to take a peek at that? Obviously, yeah. I'll just give you kind of a yeah. brief summary. Uh, it's, uh, it's located just south of the current parking lot in White Camp Park. And, and Pat, I had talked to him earlier about this. Um, when it did get warm, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe here's an opportunity to, to take these down. But I wanted to run in front of park board first. Um, you know, it was originally installed or originally kept to act as a screen for the park. Um, but as you can note from the photos is the pine trees are looking rather sickly and we've had probably uh, eight to 10 trees already fall down that we've had to clean up. The understory is full of buckthorn and invasives. And it's just, to be honest, it's, it's becoming an eyesore in the park. And I think by, by cleaning it up, um, we would probably work on it, you know, throughout the summer when there's some downtime and maybe finish in the fall. Um, but we would clean it up and then we have some prairie seed, natural flower mixtures. We can plant some oak trees and, you know, other types of trees that we want in that area to clean it up and act as a screen. So, um, I'm recommending that we just go in there and remove the pine stand, um, and replace it with, uh, like I said, a natural prairie. So any questions, any comments? Yeah. I, so I did look at it this weekend at and I saw a lot of those branches were missing. Is that what you, is that part of the disease piece you're talking about? Yeah. So the disease is the Plodia blight and, you know, once it's, it's an airborne disease and once it kind of gets in the stand, it's just a matter of time before it goes from one tree to the other, especially when that's being so close. I ran into the same situation in Richmond and like I said, we ended up having to take down a bunch of pine trees over there too. So um, yeah, it's just a matter of time. What are the, what are the, the wetter it is, the more easily it spreads. The spores do. If it's a hot, dry summer, it might slow it down, but eventually it's going to spread through the entire pine trees there. Yeah, because my I guess my question was going to be if there – I love those pine trees, and I didn't know if there was a way to save some of them. It looked like the ones when you're looking at the pine trees in the parking lot, it looked like the ones on the right were a little healthier than the ones on the left when I was looking at yeah. it. So yeah. I didn't know, if, but are you just, would there be a way to save any of them? Or do you think it's just going to be a matter of time before they're all diseased? To be honest, it's just a matter of time once, once they're in the, it's a needle cast type disease. And it's, okay. yeah, the only way that when I was, like I said, I was in, in New Richmond, I talked to the UW extension and they said that the only way of doing it is if you have vast distances between the pine trees and we're talking like mm -hmm. hundreds of feet Mm -hmm. you know, where you can kind of control a pocket. And then it, those, if you see a pocket that is disease, you take that pocket out and then you kind of just cross your fingers that it doesn't spread hundreds of feet away where these are, these are so close that it's just inevitable. Okay. Uh, well, I like yeah. the idea of the, I like the, I mean, I think it sounds like we have to do it just listening to mm -hmm. you. Um, but I like the idea of the prairie. I forget what you called it, like a prairie 
grass type thing, pollinator seed mix. Yep. Yep. It so would like be a, a natural prairie. Yep. Natural prairie with like black eyed Susans and different flowers and grasses. And yeah. um, so. And then there'd be yeah. some new, new trees also that would that be behind the prairie area? Would that, is that what you're thinking? Uh, some kind of new trees to try to shade it or where would the, where do you well, think? Well, some oaks there. That used to be an oak savanna through okay. there. So this is where I think when Paul would be basically in between um, the back of the curb and where the prairie would start, there's about a 15 foot boulevard right now before you get down into the pine stand, we yep. would plant the row of trees along the, the back of the curb there. That's where I was thinking. Okay. Okay. Do you need anything formal from us, Mike, to, that you request or just our general approval from the discussion? I'd like to have a motion for just for the sake of having one that's yeah. on file that the park board supports this. So I, I would recommend to approve removal of the pine trees adjacent to the White Camp Park lot and replant with prairie seed mixture. I'll second that. Moved and second. Is there any further discussion? I, I guess none. I have ahead. a quick quick question. For yeah. Mike, um, yeah. I, I strolled by those this week too. So I, you really had me out and about. Um, Good. Those trees are big, tall, and skinny. I don't know how old they are, but are they worth anything? Do you just cut them and shred them? Or I don't know, they just, would someone pay us for them? I can certainly check. Oh, there's a spider on my floor. I thought it was a tick. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they are skinny. And typically, you know, sawmills, they want larger lumber and that, yeah. you know, 20, 18, 20 plus DBH. I mean, there's a couple in here, but okay. I don't think there's no, there's not enough that a logger is going to come in here and want any of them. Okay. To be honest. Well, I trust yeah. you, you on that. I just, it just struck yeah. me like that's a lot of trees to. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll go in there and remove them and basically we'll, we'll mulch them and we'll reuse the mulch in our parks and some of our yep. flower beds and stuff like that. So it, I mean, it'll be a useful resource for us um, in the future here. Or we have the Girl Scouts split the wood and we could sell firewood from <laughs> there. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> we can yeah. make a post for the selfie. I yeah, just want yeah. to say I, I take no yeah. joy. I take no joy in the motion that I made because um, I love those trees and I, I yeah. love a pine grove. So it's, I think we just have to do it given the, given the reality of the disease itself. Yeah. Yeah. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. And aye. Motion carried for you, Mike. So yep. thank you. Ron, do your project updates? Yeah, I'll run through these real quick. Uh, let me find my agenda. All right, project updates. Parks are busy. Everything's busy. Um, it's construction season. So first thing, uh, as many of you have kind of already discussed, the uh, Burton Park hockey boards. And the Burton Park just reconfiguration in general. Um, if you've driven by there the last couple of days, you've noticed that there's been a bunch of site work done so far. Mm -hmm. the, is currently being flopped over the northeast corner. And the company that we hired to do the site work is calling in the crushed rock, which is going to act as the base for the permanent hockey boards. The boards themselves are being delivered on Thursday. And the site work is hopefully going to be done by the end of the week. So the boards will be starting to be installed um, next week if, if the weather cooperates. So that's on schedule to be completed here within the next you know two to three weeks. Um, Park B, the Burton Park playground surface. So I just made up some signs today that are going to be posted around the playground starting tomorrow. And the plan is the company that got the bid for the playground surface, the port and play surface, is going to install that on May 24th. The city staff is going to do the site prep internally, which includes removing all the old mulch digging um, out some material, getting the required base in and compacted. And then they're gonna be pouring a, we haven't decided either a two or three foot sidewalk that kind of acts as the border around the playground, which will hold that poured place in, in place, similar to what White Camp has. Uh -huh. 
So we're going to start, we're going to start that on May 3rd, which means the Burton Park playground is going to be down for a good portion of May, unfortunately, but the temperatures needed to be above 55 degrees in order to place that playground surface. So we needed to wait to warmer weather. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that at start starting May that that playground will be closed down. Like I said, I had printed out, you know, some posters that we're going to post around the playground to try to let the public know that, Hey, this is, this is happening. And uh, thank you for your patience as we improve the parks type of thing. So nice. Um, third thing on the list, the Grandview. Yep. The third thing on the list is the Grandview yep. park pavilion. Uh, met up there uh, late last week, talking to the plumber. Um, electricity is going in as we speak. Plumbing is going in They're Hopefully get out of there in a couple of weeks. Talking to the general contractor, the pine, prime contractor, I should say, um, Dell Construction Out Claire, they want to be completed with that facility uh, before Memorial Day, the Memorial right. Day holiday. So they got to touch up some paint, finish the plumbing, electrical. Um, there's a concrete sidewalk that needs to be poured around the outside of the building and then just some site grading work. So we're nearing the finish line, the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel with that project. Um, but look for that to be online here for the summer months, which is awesome. Just in right. time for, for peak baseball and softball season. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last project update is the Lakefront Park boat launch reconstruction. Uh, I was invited to the DNR Waterway Commission uh, last week, Tuesday, to give a presentation on our project. Uh, it was a eight-minute presentation that I gave to them. And they had about five minutes to ask any follow-up questions. Um, they all thought it was a, a worthy project for that grant. That's the RBF right. grant that they award. And so now I'm just waiting for, you know, a yay or nay from the DNR. So I'll, I'll probably move that one up to the next, next time we meet just to give, let you everyone know uh, if we got the grant or not. So that's that. Any What's the size questions? of that grant, Mike? That's uh, 250000 Boy, that would be nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then we also applied for the sport uh, sport fishing grant, and that's another two hundred fifty thousand. Can we get any Dingle that Johnson be... funds? Can we get Which Dingle one? Johnson funds for that? That's the tax that paid on on all fishing goods, on tackle, and and that goes into a fund that goes back into the state for those type of projects. Okay. You no, know, Pat, to be honest, I've never heard of that fund. Okay. Dingle, Dingle Johnson fund. Dingle Johnson. Okay. I'll check. The more money we can get, the more likely that project is going to be a goal. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all I really got for, for park updates. Um, obviously, you know, with the recent snap of cold weather, we've held off on opening up the restrooms um, across the park system. We are going to be opening them up this year. Um, last year we didn't due to COVID, but I think we have a lot more research and, um, you know, scientific support that the transmission isn't through contact surface. So we will be opening up all of our restrooms again this summer, which Great. is a good thing. Um, so probably, you know, Starting next week, that first week of May, everything will be will be turned on. Uh, summer help. We've been hiring, we've hired about six uh, seasonals so far, which are going to start mid to late May. Um, baseball and softball has started. I completed the schedule here a couple weeks ago, finalized that. So teams are already starting to practice in this cold weather. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, that's the high points. <laughs> Good. Hola. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Hey, my quick question: remind us or remind me um, with the the new boat launch, um, the water level. Um, like, at what point do you currently have to pull the close it down and pull the docks? And what time? Or, and then, what will it be once that's done? Yep. So right now we close the dock down at six eighty one point six, and we had to close it down here this last weekend. We're going to open it back up uh, tomorrow. Um, so currently 681.6, the new proposal or the new ramp, we wouldn't close it down until it reaches 683, which coincides with the no wake um, yeah. out on the St. Croix River. Mm -hmm. 
Good, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Any other business for future agendas? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Well, I, I had one, sorry. I had one okay. update to, one update, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this, that council passed that memorial policy that you guys worked on. I don't know if you oh, good. at the last, I think that was the last meeting, wasn't it, Mike? Or? Yes, yes. Okay. So. And you're oh, our council have... representative again, Paul? Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, all right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Welcome Move back, to... Paul. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, no, you're a great asset. Yeah. I want to stay wherever Mike's, wherever Mike is there. <laughs> I would move to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all.